Hey everybody, it's Hilton of 10.8 Performance and welcome back to another episode of the 10.8 Performance Lab. You guys asked for it and now we have it, a review of a Dan Wesson 1911, so stay tuned. Before we start the show, I'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsors. Oh, right. This show is brought to you by 10.8 Performance because we don't have any sponsors. So click on the description below to get some coupon codes to save on my favorite gear from Vertex, LS Concealment, Jocko Fuel, Big Tets Ordnance. And also you can visit 10.8performance.com and get some gear, get some merch. Thanks. Now back to the show. All right, Dan Wesson Vigil. I know what you're thinking because you're already Googling now, Dan Wesson Vigil, I wanna check this out. It's a 45 government, five inch barrel aluminum frame. And it is a discontinued model, which uh, I found on Gunbroker. There's, there's still a few out there. Um, I know what you're thinking. Uh, why do you review a discontinued model? Well, they have other versions uh, that are similar. Uh, this was representative, but I've done a lot of reviews and had and used a lot of five inch 45 1911s. So I wanted to mix it up, keep it fresh and branch out and talk about some other stuff. And this gun definitely give us some different stuff to talk about. The specs on this one, it's a traditional uh, bushing barrel gun, five inch government length with an uh, integral feed ramp on the barrel, which will be an important topic that we'll discuss uh, as we progress through the video. All the small parts are machined from bar stock. There are no MIM, metal injection molded, or cast components anywhere on this gun, uh, which is one of the primary uh, attractive features of the Dan Wessons. The frame is uh, aluminum and it is uh, anodized black. It's got a 25 line per inch checkering on the front strap, uh, which has a, a nice high cut radius and contour and uh, a matching aluminum mainspring housing with 25 LPI checkering on the back, of course, and uh, a rounded bottom rear corner. Uh, so that's really nice in uh, handling and carry. The slide and the steel small parts are finished in a nitro carburized finish, which some of you may know as either Melanite, uh, same as Tenifer, that's a Glock brand name, uh, FNC, Freddick Nitro Carburizing, or QPQ, Quench, Polish Quench. Basically, uh, all versions of the same process. It gives an extremely hard uh, wear and corrosion resistant uh, finish that uh, Basically, it's done in black. Spring plug on the gun is a commander length plug, uh, presumably for streamlining of their production process. So all the guns that they make have the same type of plug. Spring guide is a really nice unit that has uh, the rear of the guide rod head relieved to prevent barrel lug crash. So that's a real nice deluxe feature. The firing pin stop is a square bottom one, which is a bonus feature for delaying the unlocking and uh, sort of mitigating a little bit of the slide velocity and is really nicely fit. We've got a steel firing pin. That's a uh, 62 thousandths tip uh, diameter and it's got a extra power firing pin spring. We've got a 17 pound recoil, 18 pound mainspring. Uh, we've got sights with a, a wide square notch uh, that's uh, 137 wide and uh, has a ledge profile serrated rear face, uh, 125 wide by 175 inch tall white dot treating front sight. And then we've got some smooth wood grips with hex head grip screws. My initial impressions on inspection of the gun, uh, the edge finish, uh, as we call the D-horn, uh, was extremely functional with no real uh, apparent sharp edges. So there's nothing offensive about handling the gun. Uh, between that and the 25 line per inch checkering front and back, that nice radius high cut, uh, it felt fantastic in the hand. Just really, really nice feeling gun. Uh, the mag catch has a very light spring in there, which um, uh, I didn't mind at all. Actually made uh, dropping the mag real easy. Grip safety uh, disengages at uh, about 50%. So that, that's a good spec. So you don't have to put a rubber band on it. The thumb safety, uh, single side only, uh, but it was very stiff and difficult to uh, operate easily in the up or the down position. Uh, but mostly getting back into the up position was difficult because obviously our thumb's not as strong going in that direction. And uh, since you got to manipulate that every time you touch the gun, that was a drag. It had a very unique design extractor but it had no tension on there and a uh, dummy round fell right through. 
and uh, was not able to be captured on there. So that was a bummer. Before hitting the range or anything else with it, some immediate fixes that I had to put in place. First of all, the grips. I'm not down with smooth grips. They're kind of useless because grips, by virtue of their name, are supposed to help you grip the gun. Smooth grips, useless. I also have a particular hatred for hex head grip screws because, you know, if you got a Leatherman tool or whatever, um, it probably doesn't have a good selection of hex heads on there, if any at all. Uh, I put my own grips, the Black Cherry, sort of rosewood looking G10 grips that are on here at the, the final set of pictures. And then uh, I also put on a set of my own grip screws, which have flat slots that are uh, concave in cross section such that you can use a, um, a casing to tighten the screw. So if you're at the range and your grip screws are loose, you can just pick up a piece of brass off the ground and turn the screw, good to go. I also fixed the thumb safety engagement and I made it uh, real positive and easy to click up and down. My test firing protocol, if you've watched my previous videos, uh, always starts with an extractor function check. The gun is fired with one round chambered as normal from magazine, the magazine removed, so that the magazine does not provide any physical support for the outgoing cartridge and the extractor must do all of the work. This is a, a difficult litmus test for a lot of guns that would seem otherwise to function. And um, I knew that this gun wasn't gonna fare well on this test based on there being no extractor tension uh, as evidence on the bench. So it failed on the first round which I then went about fixing immediately before I proceeded. After I added the tension, the extractor worked and it passed the uh, function check. Next up was to do the slide drop uh, on a number of rounds, usually jacketed hollow points because they're more difficult to feed. And I was, uh, a little bit skeptical of the results and I got a number of different failures with the jacketed hollow points uh, as dropped from slide uh, with the slide locked back and dropped with the slide stop. It's important to note that racking the slide because uh, I've seen comments where people say well that's why I always just rack the slide. You again are imparting more slide velocity which is swell which may be why you like doing that uh, but also the gun should absolutely work when just dropped from slide lock with the slide stop um, because that's a completely legitimate way of operating the gun and it's actually faster than overhand racking. Slide stop uh, locked back fine. The next test section of the test was uh, locking back on uh, an empty magazine from firing, but uh, the slide stop crashed into the magazine tubes on a lot of the, the mags and kind of stuck together so that the slide stop could not be manipulated and it was impossible to drop the slide. Um, so that was a problem. Hitting the range afterwards, uh, just shooting, uh, some ball, some jack and hollow point, no issues. Um, the gun uh, shot real smooth, has a great trigger, sits in the hand well, and it tracks well in recoil. Uh, it is not uh, real sharp in recoil, uh, as you might expect for an aluminum gun. It, it is a lot more pleasant to shoot than the shorter barreled, shorter slide, lighter slide uh, guns in 45. So uh, that was a huge plus. One of the other things that I needed to fix that became evident uh, during the range session was that the mag catch uh, would stick if you pressed it uh, real hard, it would capture the magazines. So uh, I uh, fixed that and then also uh, put in a 10-8 slide stop. I also fixed the factory slide stop, but I ended up, you know, uh, I like my slide stop better. Uh, the factory had a 199 pin and uh, my part went in and uh, without much incident, locked up about the same. It is not an assumption that the part will drop in. I did the necessary checks and uh, to ensure proper fit and function. And I just put up a new video on this channel uh, about the 1911 slide stop that should hopefully help you troubleshoot that as well. So after these fixes, hit the range again a couple more times and uh, also use a mixture of ball and hollow points. Uh, still had a few intermittent failures from uh, loading from slide lock uh, where there's of course less travel, but during normal firing, the gun really had, um, had no issues at all. So um, that was positive. Uh, Note that during normal firing, there is more slide travel uh, than there is when the slide is at rest on the slide stop. It is a really nicely executed gun with top quality 
machine components and this super hard durable finish it's a really nice looking gun nice looking nice feeling gun um, I kind of wish for my own personal taste that I had front grasping grooves front cocking serrations whatever you call them because uh, I like to manipulate the gun uh, from the front but you know not the end of the world but uh, also just kind of one of my taste things aluminum guns traditionally have been uh, in 1911 world are shoot a little carry a lot kind of thing um, the five inch gun's not as easy to carry as an aluminum framed commander four and a quarter inch gun but i'll tell you what it is a lot nicer to shoot and the weight difference is not really as big as you'd think between the commander and the government model uh, a lot of weight sits in the frame and uh, that extra three quarter inch of slide and barrel doesn't comprise nearly as big a difference uh, but that's for future videos so the ramped barrel is kind of the 800 pound gorilla in the 1911 room as it were in 45 caliber an integrally ramped barrel is uh, what i would consider less than ideal is it the end of the world not necessarily but given the choice i'll prefer the gi two-piece feed ramp uh half of it on the barrel half of it on the uh the frame kind of deal um, because with a wide mouth 45 caliber hollow point or flat point bullet uh, what can happen is as the cartridge comes out of the magazine it dives down a little bit uh, by just virtue of the feeding cycle uh, and it's possible for a wide bullet to span the uh, bottom of the barrel feed ramp and the adjoining section of the frame basically sit between the two of them and with the extra steep angle of the barrel ramp uh, it basically sticks there and is unable to go upwards on the ramp and then you're stuck and that's pretty grim so uh, in nine millimeter the bullet is much smaller diameter it doesn't even hit down in that area and uh, feeding from a ramped barrel is much less of a deal uh, or maybe not even a deal in a nine millimeter 38 super or whatever but in a 45 it sure can be a deal if you're wondering why there's even one of them in this gun uh, manufacturers often choose to use this barrel format in aluminum frame guns uh, to simplify the process of production and be able to control mitigate prevent um, frame damage from either feeding of hollow point ammunition or um, with certain types of magazines where the follower potentially could nudge uh, or impact the frame ramp and uh, and cause damage to the softer aluminum frame because you'll, you'll see some frame damage on steel guns if you shoot them enough uh, from followers but uh, aluminum guns much more susceptible so where is this sit if you've got one of these or you're looking at getting one of these because like everything else about it really speaks to you if you're shooting it for fun with ball ammo good to go i had no issues with round nose ball out of this gun uh, if you're looking to shoot other bullet types or you want to use it for defensive use uh, pick a bullet type that will feed out of the gun go through the testing protocol like you saw in the earlier part of this video and all my other 1911 videos uh, run the protocol and if the cartridge feeds then you're good to go you're off to the races but it's not one of those things um, where you're just going to grab whatever ammo and expect it all to feed honestly that's a consideration for any 1911 then you want to make sure your defensive ammo with the you know the weird bullet shapes and stuff uh, feeds in your gun and there's no assumptions and uh, just got to be a little more picky a little more cautious with uh, integral feed ramp 45. otherwise the gun feels great it uh, shoots well for being an aluminum frame gun uh, it was really fantastic super lightweight and very comfortable to wear and uh, it's a it's a cool gun thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of the 108 performance lab if you like what you've seen here um, take a moment like comment subscribe tell your friends tell more friends lots of friends um, check out 108performance.com get yourself some merch shirts hats hoodies sweatshirts shaker bottles and i uh, got coupon codes below to save on gear also at 108performance.com you can get stuff for your 1911 your glock your 2011 tools parts magazine base pads sites please support the channel and uh, also if you really like technical stuff 
you want more content and you, you just want more 10a performance consider joining my patreon as a growing community of like-minded individuals who really want to learn more and do more we're doing good stuff on there and check that out please and uh, also uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, bench top and range reviews of this dan wesson vigil that are already up so if you want to learn more about this pistol there's already a bunch of stuff up on patreon they've already been up for a while because everyone on patreon gets first look at all the projects that i'm doing so that's all i got for you this time until next time i'm hilton of 10a performance and remember only performance counts mm -hmm.